Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction drama film called Equals. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins in a futuristic world. Mankind went through a devastating war a century earlier. The war only left two peninsulae suitable for inhabitants. One of the peninsulae works under a legislative body called the Collective. The Collective has set extreme rules and laws to make sure such a war does not emerge again. The citizens of the peninsula are called the members, and the Collective monitors and controls all of the members' actions. With a futuristic approach to solving the problem, everyone in the peninsula is made mentally stable. All emotions and diseases have been eradicated. People live an automated life, they do not talk to each other unless they have to. The concept of friendship and relationship is gone, and any show of emotion is considered illegal. Marriage is non-existent and any form of sexual activity is contrary to society's rules. Babies are born strictly through artificial insemination. On the other hand, no one knows what is in the other peninsula. People assume that primitive human emotions are allowed there. Silas is a member of the peninsula. He too is mentally stabilized and is void of any emotions. He works as an illustrator at Atmos. When Silas walks out of his futuristic home, we see that everyone around him is in white attire. Large skyscrapers spread throughout the city, and everyone seems to be automated. As per usual, he walks into his workplace, a voice announces a disease called the switched on syndrome, more commonly called SOS, it is a condition in the members of the peninsula, where their mental stabilization stops working, and they start to get their emotions back. It has four stages and is considered fatal by the collective. The members are daily reminded of the effects of SOS via an announcement. Nia is Sila's colleague and a fellow member of the peninsula. That day at lunch, the members eat in their outdoor cafeteria. While they engage in a conversation about work, Nia stays especially quiet. While returning home that night, Silas comes across two guards restraining a man named David. A woman who is also restrained screams David's name in dismay. The two are suffering from SOS and have gained their emotions back. They are being taken into a facility called DEN, Defective Emotional Neuropathy. DEN was established by the collective to hold in the patients suffering from SOS. While not many people know of what occurs inside the place, it is rumored that the people from the fourth stage get killed mercilessly as the stage is beyond healing. The display of emotions unsettles Silas. He then comes back to his apartment and we get a full view of it. It doesn't have any decoration or furniture and is highly modernized. To pass his time, Silas plays a futuristic puzzle game. The following day, Silas listens to the news, which reports that David and his partner were arrested for being engaged in sexual activities. As Silas and his team work that day, a man jumps from the top of the building to commit suicide. The team watches the dead body and talks about it coldly. Just then, Silas notices signs of human emotions in Nia. Her hands are tightened and she seems nervous. He notices the oddness but doesn't think much of it. Later, they are in an auditorium watching a presentation, where Silas cannot stop looking at Nia. At night, he eats quickly and seems to be enjoying his food. He doesn't play with puzzles either, he is beginning to go out of his automated personality. He dreams of his trying to commit suicide and wakes up in distress and hits his head. This is the first time he has ever had a nightmare. The following day, he goes to the doctor where he meets a man named Jonas, who is in level 2 of SOS. The doctor checks Silas, and it turns out that he has level 1 SOS. He asks the doctor if he has to go to the DEN, but the doctor assures him that cure at level 1 is easy and possible. At lunch, Silas again keeps staring at Nia. He seems to be observing her facial features. Silas gets his medication for SOS and takes it at night, while listening to a voice narrating the effects and causes of SOS. The voice adds that people with the last stage of SOS, stage 4, are taken to DEN and are electrocuted for showing emotions. The sick will go through a pain-free death scenario. The following day at work, Silas cannot concentrate and is distressed. He even cries while working and tries to hide it from his colleagues. He follows Nia around work at all times. The next morning, he switches his work with a colleague to get closer to Nia. As she explains the work to him, he doesn't seem to concentrate and keeps staring at her. Silas stays late after work and listens to Nia's recorded voice on her computer. He has begun falling in love with her. The next day, Silas and his team are in a meeting, when he accidentally drops a mug of coffee. He admits that he is suffering from level 1 SOS. The group collectively decides that Silas should stay as far as possible while working, so that the others feel more comfortable. After work, as Nia leaves for her apartment, Silas follows her. Nia catches him in the act but Silas in turn questions her if she has SOS too. 
He tells her about him noticing her demure change when the guy committed suicide that week. Nia insists she is fine and leaves. The following day at work, Silas stays as far as possible from everyone, but doesn't stop looking at Nia. The two act like the conversation yesterday never happened, both of them work late that day. Nia goes to the bathroom and Silas follows her. He gets into her bathroom stall and goes inside. The two are close when they touch each other for the first time. Silas feels Nia's face in awe. Nia reveals that she has had SOS for a year now, she never went to the doctor because she was afraid of being sent to the DEN. She then tells him that their being together is too risky, so they can't meet like this again. The two get up and finally kiss. It is now the next day, and everyone has left the office except the two. Nia again leaves for the restroom and Silas follows. The two hold on to each other, but are too afraid to move on with the relationship. They kiss again. From the following day, they start sneaking into the restroom every day. They laugh, talk, and kiss. The two are falling in love. One day, Admus's manager, Leonard, comes into the restroom while the two are together. Nia stays hidden while Silas goes out and talks to him. As it turns out, someone had reported Silas's strange behavior to Leonard. He warns Silas of the consequences of sneaking around, and leaves. The two talk on their way back home, and Silas tells her that he will look for another job to not get caught, so the next day, Silas resigns from his job. A man named Dominic replaces him as Silas gets a new job at a nursery. At night, while picking up medicines, Silas meets Jonas again. The two talk for a while and Jonas reveals that he is a part of a support group with people who are suffering from SOS. He offers to help Silas if he needs it. Soon, Silas visits the support group and meets its members namely Bess, Peter, Thomas Gill, Max, and Alice. There, he finds out that half the patients brought to DEN commit suicide as the staff encourages them. Some even watch them kill themselves. As opposed to electro-restraints, suicide seems more preferable to everyone. Silas is shocked. Later that night, Nia knocks on his door. He brings her inside and she breaks down crying. She had missed him too much. One thing leads to another and the two end up having sex. From the following day, the two meet every night at Silas's apartment. Silas has completely stopped taking his medication. The two are beyond happy with their lifestyle. That is until one morning, they hear the announcement that a medication to treat SOS has been made. The announcer suggests everyone who has been diagnosed with SOS to take the medicine. SOS of any level can be treated with it. Scared that they will not be able to feel any more, Silas and Nia go to the support group. They have decided to run away to the other peninsula. Bess tells them that it is not a good idea, but they have made their decision. They decide to leave in three days with Jonas's help. However, Nia gets a conception call from the collective. They want her to artificially bear a child. If the doctor checks her blood results, they will diagnose her with SOS. Scared, she tells this to Silas who asks her to meet him at the clinic after her appointment. At the clinic, the doctor informs Nia that she is pregnant. Silas sees two guards taking her away, but he cannot do anything. They take her to DEN. Silas frantically asks Jonas for help who tells him to go home and wait for a couple of hours. Bess, who is also a worker at DEN frees Nia and takes her to the rest of the support group. They make her dress up as fast as she can. Bess then explains to her that a patient named Eva had killed herself last night. Bess has changed her records to Nia's. So now Nia can live freely as Eva. Nia runs away to Silas's apartment but is surprised when she doesn't find him there. Meanwhile, Silas is at work where it is announced in the news that Max had reported Bess, Jonas and Gilead. So now, all three of them were cured and void of emotions. He then runs to DEN's headquarters and asks a worker about Nia. He informs him of her death. Silas is devastated. He goes blank and starts having a panic attack. Nia goes searching for him when he doesn't return back to the apartment. Meanwhile, Silas climbs on top of Atmos's building to commit suicide. As he is about to jump, he changes his decision. When he gets back to his apartment, he is greeted by a worried Nia. She immediately notices the mark on his neck. Silas has been cured of SOS. Nia asks him why he did that, to which he replies that he thought she was dead. The cure only takes effect in six hours, so he only has one more hour before his emotions go away. Nia is still pregnant, so she asks Silas to fight the cure. The two still decide to go through the plan to run away. The next morning, Silas remembers that he loved her but doesn't feel it anymore. He tells her to get dressed to go to the train as they had decided. In the train, Nia is disappointed, as Silas sits two seats away from her. Nia reminisces of all the good times with Silas. 
Just then, he sits on the seat beside her and holds her hand, suggesting that he will soon recover and gain his emotions back. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.